So there are 3 billion base pairs in the human genome of just one person. How do you analyze all that data? Especially considering it's not enough to use one person in an experiment. You need many people. That's a lot of data. And what if you want to compare your results to what is known in the gene genome of animal models, like fruit flies or worms? Now that's a lot of data squared. Well, we have an answer to this. It's called bioinformatics. This is a completely modern field necessary uh, to organize the data in molecular biology and genetics. In order to do this, bioinformatics uses uh, computer algorithms and statistics. Many of these algorithms rely on uh, the Darwinian model of evolution to make sense of all the data. So in bioinformatics, we have a modern example of uh, the practicality and use of evolution. It is not just some ancient idea that the way many creationists uh, think of it, but it is key in order to apply the modern technology that we have in order to use it to its ideal potential. I have a video attached of an excellent uh, lecture, which I think everyone should watch. Um, and it explains how evolution is um, a key model which allows bioinformatics to work. Um, the lecture is by Dr. Kimmins Zjolander from uh, Berkeley Phylogenomics Group. Um, unfortunately, the video assumes that you have a good understanding of biology. Uh, so I'll try my best to explain the basics of the video. Uh, if you don't quite understand it, uh, message me. Uh, even s some of it is even beyond me. So, uh, but I'm I'm gonna get to the basics here. So the essence of our lecture um, is uh, about protein structure prediction and the construction of phylogenies. A phylogeny is uh, simply the tree of life as Darwin uh, imagined it. Um, building such trees of proteins and other complex molecules will allow us to predict the protein structure and function. This in turn will lead us to develop drugs to target protein binding sites or enzymatic active sites. Now she gives a good example of toll receptors which I want you guys to pay attention to. Um, the same homologous protein appears to have different functions in different species. Uh, while in plants and humans, the toll receptor and its pathway are related in immunity, in scorpion, it is a potent poison. So we can look at how similar the structures are and predict how similar the functions are. We can look at how different the structures are and see how different the functions are. But maybe this is just a rehashing of the argument that similarity is proof of a designer, right? Not quite. You see, there's still a lot of error rate in predicting protein structure based simply on its sim similarity with other proteins. For example, sometimes you have uh, gene duplication in the same species. So you have a gene that is similar to another, but since it's a duplication, it does not have the same selective pressure from the environment as the original gene. Since the original gene still maintains its function, the new gene is free to mutate into whatever it wants and the animal will still survive. Uh, mutation in the duplication uh, will not lead to anything lethal for the animal. And that's where evolution comes in. You can create phylogenies that can separate genes that are inherited. Uh, these are called ortholog, um, or orthologous genes. Uh, with genes that arrive from duplications. You can trust that the genes that were inherited, the orthologous genes, will probably maintain the same function across the species because of selective pressure on that gene. If there's one gene and uh, there's a mutation on it, it could be lethal to the animal. So you know that orthologous genes probably have um, similar function across species. And you can guess that genes that arise from duplication uh, might have entirely different functions. Dr. Uh, Jolander gives a good example of such an error that comes out of looking at just similarity. If you run a search using uh, bioinformatics uh, for a particular protein and you are only looking at structural similarity, the search will tell you that um, this particular protein, the example that she gives, is an odorant receptor. So it detects odors. But when you nest that protein 
into phylogenies based on evolution, you will see that they're more likely to be G protein couple receptors since they're related to a set of proteins that all are a target of a particular drug um, for G protein couple receptors. She then goes on to uh, show how she predicted the structure of a particular gene using another homologous protein uh, and that allowed her to see how the protein um, acted in that particular pathway. But more important than anything, I think the difference between an orthologous gene and a gene that arises from duplication and how evolution can help us differentiate between the two shows us the power of evolution and how we can get past these errors that a wonderful tool like bioinformatics without evolution cannot do anything about. If evolution wasn't there, uh, no matter how much bioinformatics gave us information, it, it would be wrong information. And then uh, she goes on to other examples um, that you can organize the thousands of data that you get from millions of experiments into phylogenic, uh, uh, phylogenomic libraries uh, to give us easy access, uh, to give us good, uh, simple ways of comparing different genes. Uh, you can predict critical genetic positions and protein residues that may, be, uh, that may lead to a specific function of a protein. Uh, uh, if there's a particular difference between one orthologous gene and another and you see that those two genes have different functions, well maybe that change in, uh, uh, in the genetic code had led to that function, uh, led to that change in function and maybe that's important for that function, that position. So that will help you produce new drugs to target that particular residue, that protein residue that led to that change. She then goes into how to align possible homologous sequences that have very little commonality. I frankly don't understand everything that she's talking about here and how uh, she says that they end up with an accurate trustable sequence alignment. Uh, but that's okay. Um, that's going into a lot more detail than even I can understand. Um, usually you need a background in statistics and uh, things like that, um, bioinformatics, to understand what she's talking about. Um, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, this video, this example of bioinformatics, shows us the essence of evolution, in my opinion. Um, it is a model, evolution is a model that allows us to make educated guesses to produce valuable scientific data in a lot of fields. And this remember, this is just one video that I found Googling, and I'm sure there's a wealth of information out there. If you guys have time and want to find another video for me on this particular topic, I'd be happy to add it and credit you guys for it. Thanks a lot.